you know, like I, I say this guy's name a lot, but he was the best. Gene Steratore was the best. That'd be Paisano. You know. And I think there was too many times over the years where it wasn't a true meritocracy for the playoffs. Because you'd be in these games in the playoffs, and it should be, you know, you got four wild card games, right, the first weekend, and then four divisional games, and then two, Sick. right? So do you really need to have 10, counting at Super Bowl, 11 of the 16 or 17 crews, I guess the 17, I think 17 crews, be represented? No, you don't. You don't. You just have the same, maybe the top four, or maybe you go to six at the most. Like, but it should be the top of the top. And Gene, and what I'm saying is, is that Gene and his crew should have been refing every single round. I don't, I don't see why that makes, that doesn't make any sense. You're giving like important playoff games to, in this example, let's say the first four games of the, the wild card weekend, right? You're going to give, uh, you know, the what rated crew, you're going to give the, the seventh or what would be the 8th, ninth, 10th, and 11th rated crews, those games, those are important games. And then you're going to have the divisional round, and you're going to give it to the, to what, the four, five, six, and 7th rated crews? Why, if that's the case, why not have 1, 2, and 3, and 4 work the first weekend? In? It's because everybody's soft. Or, or maybe soft. 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's because everybody's one, two, soft, three, four, Aaron. One. That's why. Everybody's soft. Because, Aaron, you get a game. You get a game. You get game. Come on. You get. You worked hard this year. You get a game. Oh, I'm sorry, heartbreak. You don't get to do it in the playoffs. You get a game. That's why. That is, that is the reason. Well, why. And I'm saying it's wrong. It should be a meritocracy. It should be the best. The best crews. And if that's the same four or five crews, so be it. Look at the NBA. It's the same. It's the same couple crews. Once you get into the final rounds of the playoffs, right? Because it should be. I don't. I don't know if it is, but it should be the top rated guys. It should be the same in the NFL. And because we know who the best crews are. And actually, part of the problem over the years has been. Then you, in the Super Bowl, you, you create this like super crew that actually doesn't work together. Like, there's a reason that crews work well together is because communication, usually coming from the white cap and the umpire, who, you know, unless there's a veteran guy um, on the field, and there are some great veteran line judge back to the side judge, but you know who the best referees are. And sorry, and when you get into a game, yeah, sorry. you're you're like, oh, you know. We have this guy as the line judge. You know you can talk to him. You have this guy as the umpire. Okay, you know he's a little sensitive. Maybe this guy's the white cap. You, you know you just know you know who the people are, but you also know who the best ones are. And I've said this many times too. There was in the last five six years, there's been a ton of the white caps who've retired who were at the top of their game. A lot of them, including John Perry, going to TV because they make a lot of money. They're not the ones working for the league. And, and it's a problem. It's a problem with the officiating. Um, but again, it should be meritocracy. The best guys should get the best games. I think they're going to fix it. I do believe the, all the right questions are being asked to the right people, from what I've been being told. Nice. So I think the NFL understands it's an issue. The meritocracy thing. That just feels like a mindset of being soft and like, thank you for your service this year and this is what you've earned and everything like that, as opposed to like, we only have a certain amount of games and uh, you got to earn your way into mm -hmm. it, which is meritocracy happens in professional sports. It's one of the only places it continues to take place. Everywhere else, you got to know somebody, potential nepotism takes place, networking takes place, you're able to have a gig. It's like professional sports is one of the last real meritocracies. Why not do it with the refs? Come on. Come on, especially in the biggest league. I think that's a good call. They have said that Brad Allen will not be refing in the playoffs, allegedly on the internet. We have not heard that from Goodell. And we also heard that Brad Allen was not a part of the pregame meeting with MCDC when he was drawing up the plays. Somebody else was. They didn't relay the proper message to Brad, I guess. Jeez. And now you got a whole new kerfuffle to mm -hmm. break down in this entire story. Yeah, a lot of finger pointing. Mm -hmm. No, but it's not just it's not just this though, because remember, when you point one finger, mm -hmm. there's three fingers pointing right back at yourself. Remember that, asshole, Rich Rodriguez. Okay, <laughs> you know so. You got to do this one whenever you blame me. You got <laughs> you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta make sure. And I did that to Rich Rod as soon as he said that. I said, well, and then it was out there then. Yeah. And obviously, why are you such an asshole in this thing? But it is real. You got to take a little accountability on yourself. But we're in a world where a lot of people, and, you know, the more layers you have, the more different people you can blame. You know, it happens in everything almost. This is a, it's a billion dollar business. And there's multi, multi millions of dollars bet on this every single week. And there's, franchises and fan bases and players' careers and coaches' careers that depend on these games. And you're talking about, and you're taking a, a, 
you know, taking a home playoff game away from a city, that's a, you know, eight figure, probably economic boom to that city. You know, it needs uh, it. Uh, it's, it's a, I mean, think about it from that standpoint, what happened to us in 12, you know, we, we had a, a home game taken away from us by a freaking terrible call and the NFL didn't want to actually give the refs what they deserve. And it took that game, if you guys remember, the next week, what happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I guess it was back. So good. The regular refs were back. So, again, that call, the way it was handled, was messed up. However, it was also uh, – should never have been a tripping call on Dallas. So what are we talking about here? Yeah, I do. Like it isn't just it isn't just cut and dry like the NFL. The refs screwed the the you know the Lions. Um, now there you know there was another game in Dallas a while back in the playoffs. Oh yeah, that, uh, it, it had a controversial call. I think Foxy can probably speak to this one as well. Oh yeah. Um, Fourth quarter, Stafford to Pettigrew, pass interference, refs call it, and then they go wait. No, no, no. Wave it off. Detroit loses a playoff game. Oh, that's because it was Detroit. They didn't want Yeah, yeah boo-hoo, Detroit. Want, they yeah. want the star. That's why on. they picked it up, and they said, are we really? Can't do that. <laughs> In Jerry world again. <laughs> Can't do that. I, there's, does it not seem like there's a, there's a lot of uh, more outspoken conspiracy, NFL is rigged conspiracy Whoa. theorists? Showing up. Hey, last year, Aaron, so I know you were in the that. middle of it last year and playing and everything, and there was a lot going on. Last year, like in if you live on the internet, you got to be able to follow a lot of different parts of the internet. Yeah. You know? And shout out to the whole internet. I appreciate the love. Mm -hmm. Lucky to be a part of it. <laughs> the whole internet had a good time. 